right there it is now you know the bonus is uh when we start then everything will flow together and well to me it's just like having a conversation you know this because you do podcasts it's just so, it's just a chat do you have a company name leading together leading together yes okay very nice okay i'm gonna get back again okay are we ready as ready as i'm gonna be yay well welcome welcome to the equine connection pod podcast we are most excited because we're actually talking to one of our aussie facilitators and i always love that when you're trying to figure out those time schedules the time zones and make sure we're actually on the same same page and guess what all of you who are listening we're on the same page we connected exactly at the same time but i'm very excited to introduce janine jackson who is actually building her dream and her company is leading together and i think your company name janine says really clearly and i love that when you know what your name actually means obviously in that leadership area that you're developing for, I'm not sure who is your target market. Tell us about your company and how you got into this and what you're doing with it. Um, I'll be honest, Carrie, I accidentally fell into this space. Um, I've been in senior leadership in the not-for-profit space for 20 years, uh, leading different organizations. Um, and also, uh, um, having my own horses and happened to run into um, a group of CEOs in the network I was in and, and somebody happened to say oh can you do those leadership things like I've seen in the states like horse whispering things and I flippantly went oh yeah sure thinking it would never happen um, but anyway I had what started out with a group of seven CEOs in my round yard and my horse fumbling my way through, I had some incredible and profound moments. And I thought, oh, that was a bit, it was, it surpassed what my expectations were. And I thought probably I should figure out what I'm meant to be doing. <laughs> if I'm actually going to do this, I might actually need to figure out what I'm actually doing, uh, wow. which is why. I went and saw Stequine Connection and thought I probably should um, figure out how to get some qualifications or understand how to actually do this properly. Uh, but the feedback that I got from those seven CEOs was one of them um, reconnected with his teenage daughter who he had had fallen out of um, and had been arguing with. Another one came back to me and said, this has changed everything. Um, in a short period of time, I've learned how to lead a team rather than manage a team. And this is kind of how the journey has started. And since then, I've had a number of different other CEO groups that I've worked with, but I've also... Um, have throughout my career worked with homeless youth and um, women or, or people with um, mental health and physical uh, health issues and so have also done work with homeless kids um, and um, that's the stuff that gives me the goosebumps. Um, I had um uh, a young boy with oppositional defiance disorder um one of um as per the shelters worst cases of abuse that they'd ever seen and he saw coming to my sessions as a reward and this young boy I'm I'm going to try not to cry um this young boy who um, I think it was his third session started, he tried, he could not read, could not write. Um, in his third session, he started trying to read the signs out loud in front of everybody for me. Yeah. Um, and, um, 
had everyone in tears um, during the session because it was such a big breakthrough in terms of his ability to trust and communicate, um, which they hadn't had or seen before. Um, I have had so many of those moments in my arena. Um, I had um, a young girl who I am still friends with now who had so many labels put on her um and who is now um engaged with life in such an incredible way um had dropped out of everything and is now um in a relationship talking about getting married um back in work um a incredible complete um 180 from not being able to leave the house so wow i have to like you are warming the cockles of my soul and my heart. I just, it amazes me. And I, I mean, you still, even the professional and understanding how these horses are able to do exactly what they naturally do and helping us humans to be able to move forward. But these are like very short time periods that you are working your exercises and your programs with the people to have such wow big epiphanies like would you say it's through I mean obviously through the horse but you're able to do those step in so wonderfully well as a professional to help the human to be empowered to find those those leadership abilities um I think having um empathy I think is is a is a big start I mean having gone through a period of significant trauma as a young person myself has helped me discover the process. Um, uh, and I think horses have taught me so much, like so, so much about being a better human, about being a better mother, about being a better leader. Um, having a troubled horse <laughs> uh, was what started me on my own personal journey. I had, to, I thought it was the horse. So I kept trying to get trainers to fix the horse. Yep. Once I figured out how to fix myself, which is what the horse showed me how to do, um, which took some time to be brave enough to be um, introspective in terms of how to regulate my own anxiety and emotions and all sorts of other things, is the profound thing that happened with the horse. The horse started trusting me. And once you see it, you can't unsee it oh. one and once you see how a horse is asking you to behave and to be present you get it and I have had very strong communicating horses and I had one horse that changed my world um and he was my heart horse and I unfortunately lost him not too long ago um but he what he did for me, I am forever, ever grateful for. And I want to be able to give people just a small piece of that um, and allow them to experience what it feels like to be in the moment and to be present and to feel that sense of being who they are. Um, as, <laughs> um, as right? Like it's so so powerful in the humans that come in our clients who come in to take these amazing programs that are set up so not just eloquently but to be able to have those predictable outcomes as long as we're using that form of delivery but it's it's so powerful in how these humans say i have value I'm worth something because the horse told me so and not a human being doing it, but they figure it out. Like they really do because these horses, and I don't like using the word magical, but they freaking <laughs> are magical. Now I know we got evidence. We have research. We have all of those great things, the brain of the horse, but seriously, the combo of everything, it, it's magic. When it, a it, it is magic. Um, and the way I can describe it to the logical people that need to kind of not see magic is the best way I can explain it is that you can read and learn about bodybuilding from a book. 
but you'll never be a bodybuilder until you start lifting weights. So you can learn all about emotional intelligence and regulation and um, being present from a book, but until you actually physically experience and get that feedback loop to understand what it is to be empathetic, to be in the moment, to be connected um, and have that sent back to you as a message so you know what it feels like, you can't practice that skill. You have to physically do it. And that's what horses do give us. They give us that opportunity to understand empathy, connection, communication. What is our authentic leadership space? They tell you. They sure do. Wow. I'm going to, if you're okay with it, Janine, I'm going to use that example because Mm -hmm. I love that where it brings that clarity to understanding that you don't have to think anymore. It's just, ah, right. Absolutely. And you know, it's funny every time I, we run our, our orientation with our guys in recovery, because we work with two organizations here in the Calgary area. I, you know, I always say, I'm going to give you a promise today and I can make you this promise, but I do promise you, you're going to get such a gift today for the fact that you're actually going to be living in a moment. You're not going to think You're not going to think of supper. You're not going to think of the vacation or your family. You are going to live in a moment. And that's very rare for a human on earth to be able to literally come out of it to say, I thought of nothing else. I literally lived in the moment. And you can, to me, only do it with horses. In an elephant, maybe, but horses. Yeah. Um, And they're one of the most forgiving creatures on the planet um the thing that I really love uh, about being with a horse is that if you allow the space they will always bring you back to the moment and to be it's pretty hard to ignore a 600 kilo um animal which is um what I often get told um, from people who haven't had anything to do with horses is that the complete fear um, of engaging with something that they've never had any experience of and then walking away going, oh, my God, I did it. I did it. And it was good. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, my gosh. This is so amazing. And how would someone, uh, again, find you? And in your area, are you only specific to where you're located and helping I'm working with kids that are homeless and CEOs. Like how would someone ever know how to get in touch with you? Um, Well, I have um, a website uh, leadingtogether.net.au, but I also, so I do work in the Adelaide Hills at the moment and we're just building um, a brand new facility, which will be amazing when it's finished. Uh, So I was running quite a lot of, Uh, sessions in Sydney um, before we moved Um, so I'm kind of transitioning and had to transition a lot of my clients as well but now in the Adelaide Hills I'm waiting till my arena um, I'm having the roof has just gone on so it won't be far away Uh, we're only about another three to six months away from having what will be the most incredible facilities for um senior leadership groups to have retreats uh, for young people to come and do day share sessions um, and also for those people who just maybe just want to do a weekend away to be able to stop for a group. Um, I also had the fortunate um, time to do some of the families who with the homeless kids that I was working with for them to be able to go back to mum and dad which is part of the program that I was working with um, and actually facilitate that with family um, herd sessions to try and get communication between um, it might have been mum or dad um, or an aunt or grandparents that they were going back with and using that as a way to help open up dialogue and have them talk to each other in a really meaningful way um, so the program itself, I'm very, very, very 
grateful to Equine Connection because you've changed my world um, and given me something that is the most incredible. I, I it, honestly, I, can't, I I get a bit teary when I kind of reflect on some of the um, amazing opportunities that I've actually had to. Um, I guess the best analogy I can use is like a pinball machine. I just feel like I'm a little bit of a flipper. I'm not changing or doing anything. It's just that flipper that'll kind of change the direction of the ball a little bit um, and hopefully um, in the right direction is what I'm hoping um, to be able to give them something else to reflect on as an anchor point, to be able to come back to that moment in the arena to have the tools to be able to navigate whatever that situation is that they might be in at the time. And I mean, it's sorry. No, you can because it's just so beautiful listening to you. I have to tell you. I even have tears in my eyes, girl. <laughs> I just I get goosebumps if it reflecting on some of those um incredible moments. And it it and I've been really lucky that. Um, especially in the CEO group where some of them have come back to me and said that moment has stayed it's stuck um and I've got more from it even weeks and months later because it makes more and more and more sense as you start putting some stuff into practice and in real life is because that experiential learning is so profound is it's an anchor point mm. it comes back and you can keep reliving it and it means more the more you go out into the real world and and learn how to do that oh. is yeah it's not just about leading people and leading teams is it it's about leading yourself um, and how how you show up it's so true and you know that's being the leader to yourself that is always it you were talking to, I, I loved how you're wanting to bring in those, those soft skills that so many times are missed elsewhere. Like even when you're referring to, well, even your analogy, you got some really good stuff. Holy, I'm really excited about this, but how even with our soft skills and having that anchor piece and this experiential learning and, and feeling and touching it in that kinesthetic piece that keeps bringing us back again, how do those soft skills like stay with us, like how? I'll, I'll give you a couple of really solid examples and maybe using the CEO stuff is is actually quite profound because everyone will understand what this looks like. It, um, I love when I get an A-type personality um, and a senior, senior leader who has been very used to leading with fear um, is... They're the people that often get the most profound stuff out of this is because I have a beautiful mayor who communicates very loudly. Um, she's incredibly nurturing, soft, but she takes no shit from your A-type personalities. She's that he is. Um, and, um, and so they all get to see and experience what that looks like. So if you want to push and bully and try and use fear, she says no very, very loudly. Um, you Don't believe a word you're saying. Um, and on the same token, if I get someone who tries to softly tell her what to do, please, would you mind? I'd really like if you can and beg. She says, no. What's happening? No. Yep. Um, <laughs> um so what the a type personality soon learns is that this is what they're exuding to other people and they don't know they don't know any better and by them experiencing what it means to actually just be human and lead with confidence not with fear is she will just tag along and turn into an absolute puppy dog every day of the week, just go, oh, thank goodness, and and away she goes. And those moments for people, they get it. They somehow, somehow go, 
I've been arguing and fighting all this time and I don't need to. I actually don't need to. And so when they go back and they try and experiment this new way, the moments where people actually start going, oh, thank goodness, and have their own let down and they then can see that's what that looks like and feels like in people is they start looking for facial signals in people about how they're showing up and how they're turning up. It, you know, I've had um, somebody who's been, we all know them, leaders who've been promoted to their level of incompetence um, and then get there and under, cannot cannot build a team of high-functioning people because nobody wants to follow them. Uh (laughs) And as soon as they figure out the tools that they need to be authentic, everyone's authenticity is different, um, and how to dial up different elements of their own who they are is that's when they get those moments that stay with them. Simply, wow. And yet it just all works in those, again, the the time frame, like there's no pressure. Nothing happens except, okay, we're going to be working on this. And it's always, always, no matter what, working on oneself. And it's actually always about the leadership that lives within oneself. That's how, to me, all of these exercises work. So I love that you're really bringing out that solid leadership piece and everything that you are doing. Your podcast, I think this is exciting. So for all of you who just listened to Janine as well, you're going to want to follow her because isn't she just amazing to listen to? Like I could be here for hours and listening to all your stories, how you bring them together with the stories because it is life changing. And the purpose that you have created And the purpose that now that journey is opened up so people can find you, get to that path, get to that road, get to your new facility. It's truly just lovely. And you created that, like no matter what, you're the one who did it. But what is your podcast and how do people follow you on that one? Uh, So Leadership Whisperer um, is my podcast uh, where we dive in uh, and get curious what actually is leadership um and what does leadership look and feel like and um talk to different leaders about what they think leadership is and and how do you do it like what is what is it uh and how do you do it and for there is for me some significant differences between leadership and management um two very very different things and Often people are taught how to manage. They're not taught how to lead. Um, And if you want people to be self-motivated to be able to um, run organisations, a household even, (laughs) like you still... Doesn't that parallel to the family? Doesn't it always come back to that too? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't actually matter whether we like to believe it or not. We all, everybody needs to understand how to be a leader. And that that can be, um, leadership's different for everybody. Um, and there are hundreds of different styles of leadership, but it is about that self-authenticity um, in order to influence others uh, rather than direct, yeah, um, the, the the biggest the biggest difference because when people want to follow or want to believe you, magic happens. Yes, it sure does. That's how you create a movement. <laughs> is yeah, absolutely. That's how the world gets changed yep. and changed for the better. Because people stand up and lead. Um, yes. And probably the best form of leadership is your first follower. <laughs> woo, woo. Oh, my goodness. Seriously, I just so enjoyed talking with you today. I think, you know, we're going to have to do a second podcast. Maybe in 
2024, yeah. we do another one. Don't yeah. Think. Okay. I like that. I we we are planning on coming to Australia, Carolyn and I. So hopefully, if we do, we can Ooh. definitely meet you in person as well because oh, it would be this amazing. is most exciting. Oh, I'm just in loving this. Oh, you've changed my world. I'm so oh. grateful. So I, so grateful. Just love. I love everything that you are doing. Like everything. Now I'm being a horse, but I feel it. Like it feels so authentically who you are and even speaking with you and seeing you like you're you're a beautiful hu- a humbled human and that's really a very gracious thing to see like your your grace you're everything like you're a beautiful little grounded package and that is most refreshing so a huge congratulations to everything that you are doing. I'm so excited to be a part of your journey because we're all one team. You're going to have to send us lots and lots of pictures, but let's for sure do another podcast in 2024 at your new facility. That would be amazing. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Do you have any social media platforms that you want the peeps to know? I'm on uh, Facebook. Instagram, TikTok. <laughs> oh, you're a TikToker too, are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and uh, you can follow me along and see the facility being built. Um, I'm sharing those pieces as we go. Uh, the roof just went on the big arena door uh, yesterday. It's ginormous. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, so I'm excited, scared all of the big feels yeah uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it oh and you should you should now before the final ending is there anything else that you want any of your followers or people to know or understand is there a piece of advice words of wisdom anything coming from you I for me the words of wisdom I think Carrie, or uh, Carrie, is that if anyone is actually thinking about oh, one being an equine facilitator, um, is absolutely uh, go to Equine Connection. It, it will absolutely change your world. Um, but I would absolutely encourage anybody who wants to experience what it means to have a horse change your life is have a go you have nothing nothing to lose and what I can guarantee absolutely if anyone wants to come to leading together that I promise them they'll have their own aha moment I've not had anybody not ever have their own aha moment um in my arena not not yet um and then I can absolutely promise that they'll walk away with something that will stick with them um, and change the way they view the world well again that was so live lovely lovely I love it thank you so much Janine remember Mm -hmm. Janine Jackson and she is leading together definitely take a look Watch her grow because she is just an amazing facilitator. Congratulations. And thank you so much for joining us on this podcast today. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are more than welcome. We'll see you all later.